baik baik tapi kan belum ya, belum ya, ya. paspornya kan belum di update kan oh tapi paspornya kena buat dulu udah <coughs> expired iya udah expired nggak apa itu sekejap saja tiga tahun ya semua pelajar pelajar kan Oh iya, pelajar-pelajar. Nanti ada nanti uh, dosen yang lain join nanti. Kenapa suaranya dengan slow apa ini? Suara siapa? Suara saya slow gitu. Ya. Hello? Ya, sudah jelas. Ah, oke. Okay. <coughs> di sana udah musim hujan toh, dokter? Uh, di sini, ya musim. Oh sama berarti di Surabaya juga sudah musim hujan. Tapi dah makin kurang lah. Uh, last two weeks tu memang banyak lah sampai setiap hari hujan. Hmm. Ada kawasan yang banjir juga. Oh sama ya berarti. Ya. Ya ya. ya. <coughs> Ini bapa apa nama? Apa soalan gitu? Apa dosen tu? Pak. Pak siapa? itu Din apa maksudnya yang jurnal tu yang 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 handle jurnal tu apa oh, Pak, Pak Indra Pak? Pak Indra oh sebentar sebentar saya cek dulu oh belum join Bu Nania Pak Indra belum join ya Bu Nania oh tahu Pak iya kan yang punya kelas sebentar ya Ya, ini namanya belum saya panggil dulu. Oke. Okay. Ah, tidak apalah. It's okay. Kita santai-santai aja ya. Iya, yeah, santai aja. Ini pun tak. Bukanlah ah, tak tak nikalah, bukanlah tak nikalah. Okay, just uh, more to knowledge sharing lah. Bukan teknikal punya sharing lah. Okay. Okay, mungkin kelas, bisa kita. ya udah tadi tadi pagi saya ada kelas ya sekarang ah, kosong hmm. saya sudah dijawab belum gunanya ya? atau bagaimana ini orangnya online tapi belum balas via saya oke okay. nggak apa-apa nanti saya ngasih sambutan ya. uh, mungkin bisa dimulai mas Iso uh, silakan ya oke, siap pak Siapkan recordingnya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum wabarakatuh. Selamat datang pada para hadir sekalian yang telah mengikuti acara hari ini yaitu guest lecture. And welcoming to Mr. Shukur Sandim. Welcome to guest lecture. Acara ini diselenggarakan oleh Prodi S1 Sismo Masih Universitas Erlangga dan juga mendatangi uh, dosen tamu dari luar Universitas Erlangga. Oke, sebelum saya memulai, uh, I want to introduce myself first. Nama saya Enrico Maudi Junianto. Saya merupakan uh, mahasiswa S1 Sismo Masih Universitas Erlangga and I will be your master of ceremony and moderator for two hours ahead. Dan nanti saya menjadi MC dan moderator para hadirin sekalian. Sebelum kita memulai acara hari ini, mari kita panjatkan doa terlebih dahulu agar acara ini dilancarkan. Berdoa. Berdoa dapat dicukupkan. Before we answer the lecture, I will inform about of this event. Nanti pertama-tama akan ada sambutan dari Bapak Hendra, Bapak Ibu Hendra di selaku Kapro di S1 Informasi. Nanti selanjutnya setelah ada sambutan akan ada perkenalan, introduction dari saya mengenai speaker hari ini. Selanjutnya, there will be a Q&A session. Nanti para hadirin sekalian silakan 
yang ingin bertanya langsung saja raise hand langsung saja ditanya materinya uh, setelah itu uh, nanti akan ada foto session jadi kepada para hadir sekalian harap uh, on cam ya dan prepare your best smile because there will be a photo session lalu setelah itu akan ada absensi yang wajib diisikan oleh seluruh peserta karena nanti akan ada um, sertifikat yang langsung dikirimkan ke email masing-masing jadi um, tolong diisi dengan baik dan benar emailnya jangan sampai salah Nah, langsung setelah itu nanti penutupan. Oke, okay, let's start this class. Uh, mari kita mulai uh, acara hari ini dengan mendengarkan kata sambutan dari Bapak Rimulyo Hendradi. Bapak Rimulyo Hendradi, waktu dan tempat kami persilahkan. Oke, okay. uh, thank you Mr. Ijo. Uh, good morning everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, today, It is a privilege for us to have special guest lecturer who will uh, present about an insight yeah, of IoT uh, for smart. Prof. Technologist Dr. Jukor Sanimbin Muhammad Fauzi is a lecturer and UITM Cawangan Padlis uh, yeah, at UITM Cawangan Padlis in Malaysia. And today we will be our speaker about internet of things. Uh, jadi ini materinya sangat penting juga. Uh, akan dibawakan oleh Profesor Dr. Super Sanim. Lalu uh, nanti setelah materi silakan para ya mungkin uh, ke dalam materinya Pemadia Teknologi Dr. Syukur Syadi Muhammad Fauzi uh, Our mic is yours okay, Thank you uh, Mr. Enrico ya, yeah. Mr. Enrico yes, Mauludi As a chair person for today As an MC for today okay, And Thank you also to Bapak Hendra. Okay, thank you for uh, being here today to listen uh, for today's guest lecture. <coughs> okay, uh, right. Allow me to share the slide. Okay. All right. So, can you see this slide? Boleh ya? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, is it okay if uh, this presentation is given in mixed mode, uh, mixed language, which is uh, English and also Malay, or do you prefer English all the way? Bagaimana? Is it okay? Mixing, mixing. Mixing, ya. Okay, kita santai-santai lah. Okay. Yeah. Kita, 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 kita santai-santai saja. Tak perlu uh, merasa stress-stress. Kita just sit back and relax. <laughs> okay. No need, uh, no need to be too formal lah. Okay, for this session. I'm more... Uh, comfortable lah if we have kind of just a casual session lah. anyway uh, uh, for me is a is indeed a great pleasure for me lah okay, to be invited to give a talk in guest uh, lecture series okay, organized by HIMC ya yeah. okay, student association HIMC okay, under information system department okay, FST Fakultas Sains and Teknologi Unair Universitas Elangga Surabaya. So saya rasa Unair 
dan juga saya sudah tidak asing lagi since I was being appointed as a visiting fellow last two years in 2018 if I'm not mistaken okay before the pandemic lah <coughs> right so after that a lot of things or a lot of uh, collaboration a lot of collaboration uh, has been conducted lah between both universities particularly between me myself and also all the docents lah in information system department under Bapak Hendra so we have few papers okay, several papers and also last two months yeah Bapak Hendra we also yeah. have yeah. uh co-organized uh students event yeah okay student event okay between him seeing and also between uh uh, students as fashion under faculty of computer and medical sciences okay in UITM Perlis, lah. so hopefully uh, more collaboration okay more activities can be conducted lah, between our university lah, since I I'm currently being appointed as a rector so I hope so we have a lot more collaboration lah, between both university particularly between information system department and also between and also faculty of computer science lah, Papa Indra. right inshallah and of course uh, I also welcome any collaboration between other non computer science department like chemistry okay, biology because under FST we have some more uh department okay we also have i think if i'm not mistaken we also have uh biology physics uh chemistry and as a club so maybe later on maybe we can have another round of discussion uh, between uh ibu fatma okay to see what uh, other areas that we can do together uh, between both university <coughs> so I've been given, uh, no, uh, not been given, but uh, I'm proposing this topic to Bapa Hendra last two weeks, last week or last two weeks. Okay, IoT or Internet of Things for smart, sustainable cities and communities. I think the word IoT itself, I think most of us uh, are aware about that word, about uh, this is one of the emerging trends lah, in IT uh, field, in uh, information technology field. Lah. Okay, so today's presentation on today's guest talk is much more like that into an insight about how I how IoT can be applied. Okay, in uh, one area which is smart, sustainable cities and also community. Okay, we try to relate between IoT and also uh, and also uh, SDG. Okay, since SDG or Sustainable Development Goal also is one of the Emerging trend in uh, today's world. Okay, I believe in Indonesia also we used to uh, hear about SDG as well. Okay, and similar to Malaysia, we also follow or we also used to map all the things that we do okay, with SDG. So that's why uh, it's good to hear or to have this kind of discussion on how IoT can be applied in. <coughs> <clears throat> in smart, sustainable cities and also community. <laughs> okay, so a little bit background. So I did my PhD in computer science and engineering from the University of New South Wales in Australia. Okay, before that, uh, before that, I did my master degree. Okay, in the area of real time software engineering from the Center for Advanced Software Engineering. University Technology Mara, okay. Maybe some of you might be confused between UITM and also UTM, right? Okay, because of our university, we have a I, small I, okay, in between U and also T, okay. Okay, University Technology Mara, and but UTM uh, doesn't have any I. Uh, uh, U and also T, okay. UTM is University Technology Malaysia, which is located in Johor. Lah. Uh, Johor is located in a southern region of Malaysia. 
<coughs> okay, I started my career as a lecturer since 2006, okay, and then pursue my studies in 2010 lah, in Australia. <coughs> okay, so this is a uh, the big achievement. Lah. Okay, I don't think I want to elaborate more about this. Okay, <coughs> okay. <coughs> so I think uh, uh, since I have this opportunity, I would like to of course, I'd like to promote my university. Okay. I'm proud to serve of the University of Technology Mara. Okay, a little bit about UITM or University of Technology Mara. So, so this picture is uh, the picture of our main headquarters, okay, main campus in Sha'ala, Selangor. Okay. University of Technology Mara, uh, Malaysia, in Sha'ala, Selangor. <coughs> So uh, basically, we are proud to say that we are the largest institution of higher learning, of higher learning in terms of science and also population. Why I say that because we are the home, we are home for uh, around one hundred and seventy five thousand students. Okay, All right, and all we also uh, serve or have. Uh, mempunyai workforce ataupun uh, staff okay, termasuk staff admin dan juga staff uh, akademik berjumlah seramai tujuh, uh, berjumlah seramai 17,000 orang okay. dan we also have okay, uh, state campus okay, all around Malaysia right? okay. state campus meaning that uh, in each uh, in each state in Indonesia, we have at least one campus. Okay. <coughs> Kalau di Indonesia, saya rasa uh, provinsi ya, Bapak Endah? Yeah. Provinsi. Yeah. provinsi. So, meaning that in each of the provinsi, itu akan ada kind of uh, university technology mara lah. Okay. Then, other than that, we also have uh, satellite campuses, okay. Also in Shah Alam, and also uh, 21 affiliated uh, colleges ataupun college bersekutu lah okay. yang mengguna pakai syllabus daripada UITM <coughs> okay then we also offer around more than 500 academic program ranging from uh, diploma <coughs> up until S3 which is uh, which is a uh, PhD lah <coughs> So this is my campus, UITM Police Branch, okay, University of Umara Police Branch. So we are located in northern region of Malaysia, okay, in Perlis. is the smallest state in Indonesia. Uh, okay, why is smallest state? Because uh, okay, because we are the smallest state, lah. and of course because uh, we only have around two hundred and fifty thousand people okay ada penduduk di negeri Perlis saya rasa uh, Surabaya mempunyai more than 1 million eh? Bapak Indra yeah, so you can imagine how small it is <coughs> but anyway even though we are small but we are quite close to one of the most beautiful island in the world which is Langkawi Island which is I think Bapak Indra Tak sempat sampai lagi Langkawi Island. <laughs> Kita plan untuk pergi ke Langkawi Island lah. Ya, yeah, lah. <laughs> Tapi because of, of the pandemic, uh, yeah. so most of the plan uh, we have to cancel lah. So insyaallah, Bapak Indra, later on we can oh. plan for that. Later on when uh, the pandemic is okay, is over, then we can plan for that lah. Insyaallah. <coughs> <coughs> All right. So basically, UITM is the third oldest branch campus, lah. Okay. Uh, and also the largest branch campus in UITM system, lah. right? So uh, we established in 1974, okay, with only 258 students. Okay, at that time, during that time, we only have one pre uh, preparatory course. Preparatory cost me meaning that uh, just program persediaan okay is not diploma but persediaan ke arah diploma okay and also five diploma program and you can see 
during that time we only have 15 academic staff 15 academic staff i think information system department as again i as have more than uh this number called how many staff you have 16 <coughs> huh? hanya 16 16 yeah ah. 16 kurang satu yeah kurang satu ada si <laughs> yeah during that time we uh, uh we uh, basically located in padang katong lah in tanga right <coughs> so then we have uh establishing ourselves king in around king around is basically the royal uh, town uh, in Berlin. okay we have a beautiful uh palace at the moment istana lah, for our king king of Berlin, right <coughs> Okay, so currently we have uh, around 7,000 students in the UITM Palace branch and just before that, uh, as I mentioned before that, as I mentioned before that, we only have 15 academic staff, but nowadays we have 350 academic staff. And also uh, when we include uh, between academic staff and also uh, uh, administrative staff. So uh, currently we have around 650 uh, staff uh, serving UI Temple branch. Okay. <clears throat> so currently in UI Temple under UI Temple we have seven faculties. Uh, okay. Ranging from accountancy, business management, architecture, planning and surveying, applied sciences, sports science and nutrition, plantation and <coughs> agro technology and also my faculty which is computer and medical sciences <coughs> so basically we have two different uh two different stream okay two different cluster one is science and technology cluster and the other one is uh social science cluster <coughs> so this is my research group applied computing and technology research group okay you can view our the details of our research group from the uh, address shown on the slide. So basically, currently we have only six group members for ACT. Okay, where I myself is a principal researcher. Okay, for ICT uh, for ACT, and also we also have Tajul Rosling Razak King, and also we have uh, Dr. Nur Ain Muhammad Zaki. Okay, Tajul his expertise is in uh, uh, fuzzy logic system and then <coughs> Nurul Ain, his, uh, her expertise is in GIS or geographical information system and we have Hafiz Ismail and also Ray Adeline GM Ginning okay okay currently Ray currently uh, is under uh relief under my supervision so currently currently ring is doing his phd lah, okay under my supervision in the area of software engineering <coughs> and have dr Raila maskan and also dr rustam Ahmad. <coughs> our niche area of act is we are multidisciplinary area okay ranging from uh, software engineering okay artificial intelligence Okay, Internet of Things, GIS, machine learning, okay, big data, and also information retrieval. This is just a list of a uh, list of research grant lah. by our group. So this not a uh, very updated one. We just received another three to four research grant. Okay, not three to four. Uh, I think around eight research grant. Okay, from the ministry from the. Uh, in the from the uh, from the Panama local university research grant. Okay, this is the list of our postgraduate students. Okay, this is our collaborators. We have a lot of practice, uh, starting from, of course, uh, Unai also spark collaborators right yeah, from indonesia okay indonesia is very big uh, we are proud to have a lot of collaboration with uh, many universities in indonesia including 
Nous sommes en Elangala et nous sommes en Suscariao. Nous sommes en Islamriao. 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 And also, universitas, uh, what is UP, Bapak Indra? Pembangunan negara. Uh, universitas Pembangunan Negara, uh, Jawa Timur. ya yeah? Betul. Jawa Timur, Surabaya. Yeah, if Surabaya. I'm, UPN. And we are looking to have more MOUs and also more collaboration lah with Indonesian University, insyaAllah. And under my uh, leadership, insyaAllah. Uh, visibility, internalization, okay? and also networking is one of the main agenda of UITM Police Front. Yeah. And we are looking forward to have many activities with uh, our international partners okay? in the future. Also, we have a uh, network with uh, Chile, okay? University of Conception, Chile. Deakin University, uh, Australia. Okay, of course, in Malaysia also we have collaboration with University of Malaya, which is one of the top universities in Malaysia. And then UTHM, UKM, UPSI, okay, Telkom University in Indonesia, and also from India, <coughs> we have University of Calcutta. Okay, that's just a summary of our achievement. Then next comes to the context of today's talk. So <clears throat> today's talk uh, consists of a few things. I think I have a few agenda to talk about this today. Ranging from Internet of Things, I think it's good for us to revisit the definition of IoT and then about SDG. Okay? Uh, then we are going to have a short highlight on SDG 11. <coughs> okay, since smart city and also communities is fall under SDG 11, so it's good for us to know the meaning of each of the smart, sustainable cities and also component of SSC. Okay, application of IoT. Okay, application of IoT. We're going to discuss on the Things or the area of the application on what we can do, okay, how we can apply IoT in the context of smart, sustainable cities. And we are going to take a look into uh, some challenges that we may face lah, okay, when we would like to implement or adapt or apply IoT in this as in this SSC context. We can and then maybe a little bit about feature duration and also finally a conclusion. <coughs> so what is IoT? I think many of us know the definition of the IoT. <laughs> okay. Thinking based on the slide is uh can refer to a massive network of physical uh, devices that can embedded with sensors, okay? Software, electronic, and networks. Okay, this the combination of uh, different uh, hardware, four types of hardware. You okay? sensors, software, electronic, and network. Okay, which uh, basically which allow the devices to exchange or collect data. Okay, when we talk about our thing, of course, we have uh, we need to collect data, right? Okay, and also perform action or the concept of uh, connecting any device okay, to the internet and also to other connected devices. So two main things, two main important things here, we should have uh, these four things, okay, sensors, software, electronic, and also networking, and also we should have an internet, and also we should have an internet uh, in order to, uh, to be known as an internet of things. So you can see that now every day devices like uh, thermostat, okay, like uh, lights, lampu, okay, creator, also also TVs lah, also uh, equipped with uh, this kind of smart, okay, smart things lah, or IoT things lah, by connecting them uh, 
over network and also over to the internet. <coughs> so when we connect this uh, like TVs to the in, uh, to the internet, so uh, these devices like TVs, okay, will not only be able to send data to the internet, okay, but they will also be controlled over the internet. So these devices will become things like, on the internet of things. <coughs> <clears throat> right so uh pretty much uh, okay, any physical object can be transformed into an internet of things okay if okay if it can be connected to the internet and also it can be controlled or communicate in terms of the information so like digital watches okay smartphone electronic wire okay light bulb that can be switched on using a mobile phone or, or smartphone application is an uh, internet of thing device as is a motion sensor or a smart thermostat in our office for example okay so an iot device could be fluffy as a child's toy or as serious as a driverless truck okay some large objects may themselves be filled with many smaller IoT components such as uh, jet engines okay that now that is now filled with a lot not a lot with thousands of sensors okay that can be used to collect and also that can be used to transmit data back to back okay to make sure it is to make sure our jet okay our jet can be uh operated efficiently right okay uh okay everyone has a backstory okay this just a uh, history okay like us iot also has its own backstory lah. okay so basically iot was coined in 1999 by a british entrepreneur King Cesar, mungkin some of you know this name, okay, Kevin Ashton. King okay, Kevin Ashton is uh, from the firm uh, PNG. Now this is known as PNG or dalam uh, panjangnya PNG ataupun Procter and Gamble. Okay, if you have heard about this company before, right? Okay, was coined by this guy lah. Okay, in 1999, right? Okay, and in uh, and is widely uh, used basically in uh, in a ten to fifteen years back lah okay. and nowadays in twenty twenty we can see or we already use a lot of the IoT devices in our everyday life and also at work lah and we can say that IoT has grown to be one of the hottest <clears throat> trends since the last few years uh, from being a mere theory okay and to a key priority in organization worldwide okay kalau kita pergi mana-mana pun okay anywhere in any field okay sama ada tourism military okay manufacturing and etc they will talk uh, agriculture and etc okay they will talk about IOT okay, because IOT used to help in our daily life okay, a lot. <clears throat> so how it works? So uh, the, uh, in terms of the technology of IOT, it may vary from one ecosystem or architecture to another. However, the basic working concept remains the same. So the working process starts uh, with the object such as digital watches, okay, smartphone, and etc. Okay, next, uh, the platform collects data from multiple devices, and then we use to analyze those data. Then it transfers all available data using application to connect the devices. Okay, so so everything works uh, seamlessly through these four components like sensors, okay, uh, connectivity, data processing, okay and also user interface <clears throat> okay how does iot help okay when something connects with the internet it has both the capabilities 
of sending and also and or receiving the information. Okay, making it smaller to make sure it making it smaller. And being smart uh, does not mean it needs to process uh, to process a supercomputer, okay, or spoon or super storage inside it. So what all it requires is access by connecting uh, to a computer or storage. Okay, similarly, like our thing is uh, creating loads of opportunities uh, by linking the computer system with the real and also physical world. So for example, when for example, just a few years back, okay, or few or few years ago, when you wanted to listen to your favorite song, okay, on your mobile phone. So you had to download each song, right? Don't. Now, what we can do is we can listen to any music we want without downloading it, okay, necessarily, okay, into our mobile phone, okay? So all you have to do is we have, uh, should have an access where it is stored on the internet, right? Okay. <clears throat> so some fine major advantages that IoT brings include First of all, is uh, efficiency, okay? With faster connectivity through IoT system, it may help to increase the efficiency. It's because the amount of time spent on performing tasks it can also be reduced. For example, if you want to find uh, the answer to a question, okay, instead of browsing on your phone or turning your computer on, you can just ask a voice assistant now, like Siri and also Alexa, right? And then uh, other advantages of IoT like technical optimization, okay? Meaning that, for example, you no longer have to operate multiple devices for each task manually uh, if you're using an IoT system. It's because with IoT, we allow us to control everything, right? Uh, using a single device, okay, like smartphone, okay, like for example, maybe some of you have a smart home, so we can control our smart home, okay, you, you just using our mobile phone, yeah, right, and then convenient, uh, so with our IT system, it has increased the convenient, uh, our convenient, the convenient, widely at home, okay, so we have kind of IoT enable refrigerator uh, refrigerators okay uh, air conditioner okay toaster coffee maker and others okay with this with the combination of this it help to save a lot of time okay for us and then conservation can okay, it help uh, for example it help to conserve the environment by where by using the LT can assist us to like for example Okay, in smart city, it may help to monitor traffic, okay, water, electricity usage, okay, air quality, and etc. Right? And personalized with IoT devices, it can help to collect the data and then we can learn the data. There's interesting things about that where we can fully utilize the data uh, based on our uh, behavior. <coughs> Okay, we can say that IoT solutions are widely used in numerous companies across any field, okay, and also industry. Okay, like on the slide here, uh, most common IoT applications include in uh, smart home, okay, wearables, okay, smart city, smart grid, industry, internet, connected car, connected and connected health, okay, smart retail, okay, supply chain, and also smart family. Okay, then about SDG, I think many of us have heard about this SDG. The we have around 17 yeah, SDG goal again, okay, okay, that define the global sustainable development priorities and also aspiration for 2030, okay, and seek to mobilize global efforts around a common set of goals and also target. <laughs> Right. So between 2000 and 2015, the Millennium Development Goal or MDG basically provided an important development framework and achieved success in a number of areas, such as reducing poverty, 
thinking and also improving health and education in developing countries. So the SDG succeed, basically succeed MDG. So previously, before we have before we have SDG, we have MDG, right? MDG, Millennium Development Goal. Okay, SDG succeeded in MDG. Okay, where but it expand the challenges that must be addressed to just only eliminate poverty and also embracing a wide by embracing a wide range of interconnected topic across the board, which include economic, just social and environment of uh, sustainable development. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, the SDG were born uh, were born out of what is argue, arguably the most inclusive process in the history of United, United Nations or UN by reflecting substantive input from all sectors of society and also all parts of the world. So through the UN Global uh, Compact alone, more than 1,500 companies provided input okay, and guidance. So the goals are universally applicable in developing and developed countries alike. So you can see that this 70, 70 goal has been applied or have been followed by majority or by many countries in this world, okay, including, I believe, Malaysia and also Indonesia. <laughs> okay, so the main focus of today's talk is about SDG 11, okay, which is smart, uh, smart sustainable cities and also communities. Okay, is uh, SDG 11, okay, where the main focus of SDG 11 is to make cities and human settlement inclusive, excellent, and also sustainable. Right. Because okay, this is because of by 2050, okay, you can say that two thirds of the okay, which is around 6.5 billion people will be urban, right? So sustainable development cannot be achieved without significantly transforming the way we build and also manage our urban spaces. Right, so that's why we have one of the goal and in SDG focusing on this alone. <laughs> okay, talking about SDG eleven. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, what does it mean by smart? Okay, by city and also by smart sustainable cities. Okay, smart. Is some there's no common consensus about what smart really means in the context of ICT. Okay, so although this term has become unfashionable, it, uh, it is also broadly used as a synonym of almost anything considered uh, to be modern and also intelligent. And then city itself uh, is considered as an urban area, which according to the United Nations in 2005, okay, typically begins with a population density of 1,500 people per square mile, but it may vary across country. So cities range according to their uh, agglomeration, okay, from localities or villages, okay, for example, Greenland and Iceland of 200 to 1,000 inhabited, okay, to towns or places like in Canada, okay, to cities with a population of 10,000 and 1.5 inhabited, and mega cities with a population that exceed 1.5 million. Okay, so maybe we can uh, call Surabaya as a mega city because how how many how much population we have in Surabaya, Bapa Indra, two million. Uh, 
All right. Okay, that's okay, Bapak -bapak, Pak Indra. Right. Almost, almost three million. Three, almost three million people. Almost, almost three million yes. people. Oh, that's very huge. That's very a lot. Okay. Memang banyak. So, so Surabaya can be known as a mega city, lah. Right. Then smart cities here is uh, this find as the ability to bring together all resources again to effectively to effectively and seamlessly achieve the goal and fulfill the purpose it has set itself again okay, this based on ISO in 2014 <clears throat> and smart sustainable city okay, meaning that okay, okay based on anthropology okay based on the literature in 2017 King SSC or smart sustainable or smart sustainable cities can okay, use to meet the needs of its present inhabitant okay, without compromising the ability for other people or future generation to meet their needs and it must be supported by ICT. <coughs> so these are the components of uh uh component of smart sustainable cities. Okay, we have here like smart infrastructure okay smart transportation smart environment smart services smart governance smart people smart living smart economy and etc okay it's all about smart 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 okay <coughs> so then we go to the application of iot in the context of ssc okay <coughs> so how IOT can become kind of enabler okay, of SDG or how IOT can be used to assist or help SDG level or become an enabler for smart city. So this is a picture of smart city. Okay. So we can say that emerging technologies like IOT, big data analytics have made smart city solution more advanced and also feasible, right? Okay. As per the UN estimate, around 68% of the total population will reside in the in the in the urban areas by the year by the year 2050. So in such a situation, uh, the concept of smart city will gain traction in the coming years. So uh, we can say that there, okay, in smart city, IoT in IoT and big data analytics can play a wider role okay so the next next following slide okay are the application of iot in the context of smart sustainable cities and communities so there are a lot of application of iot in the context of today's talk okay of course there are a lot of that but because of the time i think so i will only focus on the most common application okay Okay, by looking at this uh, application, hopefully we can have an idea on what we can do. Okay, okay, or what reason can be conducted right in the near future or in the future. Okay, in the focus uh, in terms of the traffic management. Okay, in 2018, drivers in world's most congested urban areas lost around. Hundreds of hours to road transfer, uh, to road traffic. <laughs> I think in Indonesia, uh, certain part in Indonesia like Jakarta, Bandung, maybe Surabaya also face this kind of issue or problem, which is road congestion. Right. So imagine, for like example, in uh, Colombia, okay, Bogota. Bogota is one of the city in Colombia. Okay. Uh, based on the statistic, eh, drivers lost 272 hours per capita. Okay, okay, the highest in the world to road congestion. 272 hours. Imagine how much time that they spent on the road itself, right? And then in America, okay, another example, another another example, America. So the American on average lost 97 hours in congestion in with uh, Boston with uh, Boston Massachusetts okay topping the country at 
164 hours. Okay. Uh, and then the city also experienced the greatest cost globally from congestion at US 2,291 a year. <laughs> so, uh, because of that, okay, because of that, <clears throat> a lot of IoT application that we can use or we can uh, uh, that we can uh, establish in order to solve these uh, issues, <laughs> like for example, a smart traffic system, okay, which is based on big data and big solution, okay. Once we have a smart traffic system, okay, meaning that we have a data from that data, we can analyze, okay, we can analyze the data in order to, uh, okay, uh, in order to assist the drivers okay and also to administer uh, and also to fetch and share uh, the information across various departments in our country to take prompt action okay normally uh, when we have the smart traffic system normally it is integrated with junction control system vehicle control accounting system and also junction control unit <coughs> And then uh, next is smart traffic line. I think is the most common one. Okay, and then smart emergency assistant, where road road accident have become one of the very common issues these days as well. So no matter whatever the reason is, losing life, I think in a road accident is very very is very very sad. And so there are several situations where people lost their life as they were unable to get the treatment on time so as there won't be any people around it become hard for them to get help so but uh, the IoT based traffic control system addresses can be can address the issues uh, pretty effectively so you can have some kind of sensors present on the road to detect any kind of accident that has happened and the problem is immediately can be reported to the traffic management system which then the authority or the uh, the respective department okay, can take further steps to sort the concern out. <laughs> and then uh, in terms of the parking management, right? okay, the search when we have a lot of people or human or, uh, live in a certain city, so we also may face this kind of issues which is parking management okay again okay, to understand the magnitude of parking lot problem uh, that may face by uh, municipal communities okay let's take a look uh, at the some of the statistics uh right according to the world bank okay over four billion people on earth are city residents okay that is more than half of the entire population so by 2030 the value will reach around 60 percent of the overall population so the growing scale of urbanization will bring more challenges in terms of infrastructure planning and also transportation network including the rising demand of comfortable Parking. <clears throat> so when okay, when we face this issue, okay, like searching for parking may result in considerable losses in productive time and also money. So 35% of commit time okay is dedicated to finding a parking stop, a parking spot. So the financial loss that the economy sustained are tremendous, okay. According to USA Today, okay, the cost of wasted time and fuel per driver is around three hundred and forty-five dollar. Okay, that is a very huge cost. So, some of the IT application for smart parking that have already been okay or are set to be released in the near future include one. Firstly, is tracking cars with sensor system, right? So here IoT. 
is the technology at the core of vehicle tracking platform. Tools like JP, uh, tools like GPS, right? Uh, GPS sensors can help to collect location data on a car, right? And monitor the occupancy of parking spaces. And so this information is transferred to the cloud gateway, processed and sent to the network server. So the data will be presented to drivers and car companies managers in the form of understandable, clear insight. So as for now, IoT-based vehicle trackers are mainly used by large-scale corporate uh, organization, organization okay, for fleet management or parking management. So in the near future, when the release of 5G, I believe, will make the Internet of Things more accessible, okay, parking lot technology will spread among car drivers and also will be used to manage uh, daily commutes and also mitigate parking challenges. And then other applications like smart counter system, okay, can use a uh, connected counting cars, okay, to detect when a car or vehicle enters and leaving the parking facility. I think, I think this system um, uh, has been used by most of the established shopping mall, okay. Maybe Tunjangan, Tunjangan Plaza using this kind of system. Tunjangan Plaza, Pak Indra. Tunjungan Plaza. Oh, Tunjang. Tunjungan, Tunjungan Plaza. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I believe Tunjungan Plaza, one of the biggest mall okay, in Indonesia may use this kind of system, a smart counting system. And then smart, another thing is smart parking for this system. This is, uh, this is one of the uh, application developed by my student, uh, okay, but focusing on disabled person. Okay, this because uh, one thing that motivated us to develop this application is because I uh, of the demand of the parking space. Okay, because of the demand of the parking space, when the demand are increasing, some people okay may break, may have or may have the tendency to break the rules and also violating other rights. So in this context, uh, it may also violate at the bridge the disabled parking spaces. Uh, okay. Okay, we can see lah in our normal daily life. Okay, kita mungkin akan nampak ada saja kenderaan, sama ada motor car, okay, ataupun uh, motorcycle that park in a disabled parking lot. Okay, so that's why some of the application that uh, has been uh, developed to cater this kind of issues or problem. Okay, like Mark used to develop this uh, application by integrating with alarm system, okay, and also RFID. So it will uh, it will uh, pass uh, uh, identification, okay, where it used to uh, beeping an alarm when there is a breaching in terms of the parking at the uh, disabled parking. <laughs> and then public safety. So how IoT can help public safety, okay? <clears throat> uh, with so much on plate public safety officials need as much help as they can when it comes to providing services to citizens. So IoT technologies can aid public uh, officials by giving important insight when they need the most, okay, especially when it, when it involves the safety of residents, data needs to be reliable and easily accessed. So it has been identified that IoT can drastically extend the limit and scope of traditional public safety services, okay, and provide new means and intelligence for improved like situation awareness, okay, prevention, mitigation, response, and recovery supporting automated notification, okay, actuation, optimal knowledge sharing, improved decision making, and also advanced interaction with citizens, public safety agencies, and the first responders. So, some ways IoT can be used to aid officials allowing for better public safety include preventing building and structure collapse, okay, okay, like for example, in United, in United States of America, on average, about 128 bridges collapsed 
in US in every year, which causing chaos, okay, disruption, and in the worst cases, fatality in local areas. So the best way to avoid this type of disasters is through preventative maintenance. So what we can do is by using generated uh, by using data generated by IoT devices, which is of course the sensors installed at each of the bridges, all right, and combined with uh, artificial intelligence and also machine learning, official or authority can get predictive insight into seating infrastructure and the uh, vibration infrastructure that can indicate cracks, okay, extension or excessive. Uh, okay. And uh, locating people who are lost or in danger can improve driver safety and also improve situation uh, awareness. <coughs> then smart management, waste management. This is also an area used to be researched by uh, some of my final year projects. Right. Right. So statistics, the amount of waste written is enormous. Other point is very big. In 2016, 2017, uh, it was calculated that around 267 million tons of waste had been generated. Okay, banyak ya. 267 million ton of waste had been generated. So that is approximately 4.1 to 4.51 pounds or percent per day, right? As we dedicate more attention to the amount of waste we generated, are we generating and how it's handled, we also have to look at how those processes can be made more sustainable, right? So IoT presents a huge opportunity to reduce waste lower operating cost of waste management company and also improve the quality of services that resident and business receive no matter where they are located. Okay, so how it can help? So we can it can help in terms of, of the route optimization, okay, by using a sensor. So the sensor can send uh can send a data to authority that indicate whether the bin or the dustbin is full or not. Okay. From then we can use that to calculate the route or the shortest route that can be used or applied by authority to collect all the garbage or all the waste around the cities. <laughs> okay. Good things about this route optimization, uh, good things about this route optimization, right? Is uh, for example, it can help to reduce in collection cost. Okay, it may impact the collection cost. Of course, when the truck, when the waste truck uh, used to move uh, very limited, of course, it may have an impact into cost and also uh, impact to the CO2 emotion uh, reduction and also may impact into the time as well. Okay, environmental monitoring. For IoT, right, it can be used to uh, to monitor the water quality, okay, air quality, okay, and also uh, monitor energy monitoring and also toxic uh, toxic gas detection, and then transportation can help to increase uh, our daily life, okay, increasing the quality of our life, okay, by enhance customer experience, okay, and also improving safety. Okay, by applying or by uh, implementing IoT uh, into a kind of application like connected cars, okay, toll and ticketing, okay, vehicle tracking system, and also public transport management. Okay, for energy supply, one we have installed kind of IoT solution, then can use the data to understand, okay, or to make a prediction in terms of the uh, in terms of the utility that <coughs> need to be generated and etc. and also can be used to model okay the uh, electricity or also the usage of the power consumption 
in our country. <coughs> okay, this is the real case study of the application of the IoT in smart city. <coughs> okay, this is the city of Seoul. Again, city of Seoul. So the city of Seoul have a problem like insufficient public waste bin. Okay, uh, again, littering due to of uh, rowing waste bin and as a crumb, right? So, uh, so that's why the Seoul Metropolitan Acute because they had a problem with frequent waste collection and waste over Rome. Okay, all right. So with an, an inadequate number of uh, number of public waste bin and also with four to five dealing waste collection providing to be insufficient, they had a serious problem on. So what they can, what they do is they come out with a solution known as a open okay clean cube, all right? Okay, so with this kind of solution, they help the uh, city, all right, okay, to know the level and also to the set of the bin around the city, and then that information will be sent to the authority to do kind of uh, certain tasks like uh, garbage collection and etc. Et right. <coughs> okay, an example, okay, like in Malaysia. Okay. Right. Like in Malaysia, we have Iskandar Malaysia, Iskandar Malaysia Smart City in Johor. Right. And then city of Calgary. Uh, 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 to man, uh, IOT to assist and meeting. Okay. Banjir in Brisbane, Australia. Okay. In Infrastructure, this intelligent and analytic they used to assess and to measure things around group. Uh, in the context of smart, sustainable cities and communities. Okay, first thing is uh, citizen engagement, right? Okay, citizen uh, citizen engagement. Okay, uh, maybe the people are naturally resistant to change. Some people might have a problem. Okay, because Quran don't adapt on the technological changes right because they are the biasa kita dah normal life right so the one the city side uh uh apa nama mas lah bagai mas tu mas yang orang citizen lah difficulty to use kind of technological investment or solution right <laughs> Okay, and then uh, maybe uh, and then uh, other things is like security and also privacy, privacy concern. Okay, okay, like uh, right from, for example, your toaster and refrigerator to your TV and car will be connected in a smart city. So this will leave us into a privacy and security vulnerabilities okay and upon security and upon privacy breach which is open to the hackers right <coughs> and then uh maybe problem in the, with interoperability okay like for example most of the connection like, with object will be enabled through rfid for example and this uh vulnerable to hacks so this enabling a hack proof IoT ecosystem will ensure a faster 
realization of the smart cities development. <laughs> okay, so come to the final slide conclusion. So today's uh, sharing used to discuss about IoT in smart symbol cities and communities. So uh, basically, as we can see from the discussion, IoT provides many solutions in different uh, sectors or many sectors ranging from transportation, environmental monitoring, traffic monitoring, and other things. And this will also lead to efficient solve. Uh, this will lead to efficient problem solving in case smart mobility, subsidizing, and also many more. Okay, so I think that's all. It's almost one hour. I think okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dr. Shuko Sanim, for the lesson. Okay. Uh, mari kita lanjutkan. Uh, Q&A session, maybe. Uh, kepada seluruh para hadirin, serta yang ingin menanyakan mengenai materi, silakan. Boleh langsung saja raise hand. mengenai IoT ya materi tadi silakan para hadirin sekalian yang ingin bertanya langsung riset saja Mungkin pertanyaan pertama dari Bapak Hendra ya. First question from Mr. Hendra. Uh, Mr. Shuko Shanim, are there any examples of FYP topics related to IoT in your campus? Example of FYP topics related to IoT in our company, in my campus. Yes. We have a few uh, FIP topics lah. Ada beberapa topics uh, berkaitan dengan funny project lah, berkaitan dengan IoT yang berkaitan dengan IoT di kampus kita di kampus UITM Perlis. For example, in since in UITM Perlis kita ada ladang, okay? Or we have agricultural land, okay? Quite uh, big, okay? Sangat besar, okay? Di mana kita ada tanam harum manis ataupun memang pelan harum manis. So we used to implement IoT okay to assist our uh, unit ladang lah okay in term of to make a characterization in term of mana mango yang ada masalah okay mana mango yang tak ada masalah ataupun uh, in other word in doing a grading system lah okay bila we when talk about mango ni dia ada different grading ada grade A, ada grade B, ada grade C. So when we implement IoT, so we can uh, we can uh, kita dapat mengetahui lah. Okay, when we harvest a lot of mangoes, okay, we have uh, we used to harvest a lot of mangoes every year, around three tons of mangoes every year. Tiga ribu, tiga ribu eh, tiga ribu, tiga ribu, tiga ribu kilo mangoes. So kita dapat kenal pasti dengan pantas. Mango mana yang boleh kita jual dengan harga grade A, dengan harga grade B dan juga dengan harga grade C. This is one of the example. And another example is we have marine uh, program here. They also used to implement IoT in order to uh, in order to apa nama uh, in order to know about the water quality in the area of the sea. Okay. Contohnya di Langkawi kita ada dua tempat ada marine base, okay. So kita install 
uh, IoT things in order to predict and also, and also uh, in order to predict and also in order to read that that to see quality level uh, uh see water lah right that is secondly yeah uh, the number two lah uh. okay these are some of the things lah uh, of the FYP uh, of the IoT project that we use to implement in our campus. <laughs> Okay, other than that, in the, in the future, maybe uh, banyak lagi topik-topik FYP yang kita boleh buat sebenarnya. Okay, untuk LOT. LOT ni besar sebenarnya. We also uh, can do, for example, uh, smart meter monitoring. Okay, you need to monitor the, uh, the use of electricity in our campus. Okay, then we also can apply our uh, uh, air pollution okay we also can develop air pollution in our monitoring system and other than that maybe we can also uh, implement or develop uh, come up with an idea to to for example to apply iot in the context of uh, healthcare okay because we have here UITM clinic or UITM other unit kesihatan okay we can also use to implement LOT in the, the context as well okay and so that is example of the FYP topics that we can implement in our campus I, I, I believe other than that there might be other IOT topics that we can implement maybe if you have any ideas okay we can talk and uh, maybe we can do uh, kind of uh, joint supervision okay okay in order for us to develop iot education okay that can be applied that can be applied in our campus oh one more one more in our campus we have a bending road at point jalan yang berliku lah right so my student used to come up with iot application in order to assist the driver okay normally before this kalau ada hair pin band Happy band tu Bapak Hendrang apa ya dalam dalam bahasa Indonesia apa tu jalan yang bengkam bengkok jalan yang apa berkelok berkelok kelok ya berkelok kelok so is danger right dia bahaya oh. kan so normally apa yang kita buat normally uh, kita akan install uh, cermin kan betul hmm. kita akan install cermin ataupun we use uh, manual practice when people use to raise a red, a red or uh, green flag okay, to help the driver. So my student used to develop an IoT application to provide an alarm system okay, for the driver to be aware in terms of the car okay, between uh, 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 in terms of the car lah, that reaching each of the intersection. Okay. Right? <coughs> so that uh, are some of the examples. Lah of the IoT application. What about in uh, what about in Erlangga, Pak Indra? Uh, maybe in Erlangga about uh, was uh, management ya. Yeah. Jadi lakukan di ini di uh, environmental engineering ya. Yeah. Was management. Cuma saya tidak tahu persis ya. Yeah. Uh, karena tidak terlibat langsung di project begitu, begitu juga uh, penanganan uh, air bersih ya penanganan air bersih yang layak minum jadi di sebetulnya di apa di kampus C ya itu kan uh, ada air yang bisa langsung diminum itu kan di depan rektor tapi sekarang nggak tahu masih ada atau enggak ya. Mas, masih coba pernah lihat ya di gedung depan gedung rektorat itu jadi lalu dari keran itu bisa langsung diminum itu ada itu oh, di iya, pernah, laga. Ah nggak tahu itu masih saya belum pernah nyoba cuma lihat pernah itu. Nah, itu. Oke okay. uh, mungkin langsung lanjut aja ya. ke pertanyaan berikutnya mungkin ada yang ingin bertanya kembali ada any question about the lesson notes as well. Oke, okay, silakan mungkin bertanya pakai bahasa Indonesia enggak apa-apa, enggak masalah. Iya, silakan. 
<coughs> yeah, boleh cakap dalam bahasa Indonesia. Yeah. No problem. <coughs> Or maybe uh, any question, apa-apa pertanyaan berkaitan selain daripada ini pun boleh. Ya, yeah, Pak Pandra mungkin nak tahu yeah. tentang kehidupan di kampus UiTM ataupun anything else. Ya. Yeah. Ya, silakan para hadirin sekalian yang mau bertanya selain dari IOT juga nggak apa-apa Dan tentang UITM Malaysia atau uh, mungkin uh, possibility untuk uh, student exchange bagaimana uh, dokter ya? Uh, ya student exchange ini. boleh student exchange uh, kita ada terima student Indonesia untuk exchange. Uh, sebelum ini dengan Universitas Islam Riau. Hmm. Okay. So, kita hantar pelajar ke sana dalam 30 orang dan pelajar ke daripada Indonesia juga ke sini 30 orang. So, kita akan provide lah uh, combination and etc. Lah. Okay. So, di sini saya tak pasti apa masuk exchange untuk uh, apa masuk exchange oleh Pak Hendra. Adakah maksudnya in term of menjalani latihan praktikal atau bagaimana? Uh, maybe uh, aktivitinya bisa dalam bentuk short course ya, short course di liburan antar semester itu di break in break semester ya, atau mungkin bisa kegiatan uh, bersama seperti, uh, seperti kemarin cuma ini modelnya offline gitu. Modelnya apa? Cuma offline, offline. Face to face lah. Ya, face to face pengennya gitu ya, inginnya. Boleh Bapak Indra, no problem. Boleh, tak ada masalah. Nanti bila dah beli offline, face to face, bisa datang ke sini. Kita bisa buat pertukaran lah Pak Indra. Dan kita boleh ada konsensus lah untuk kita, mungkin kita boleh bantu daripada segi hostel, accommodation. Mungkin hmm. kita boleh, uh, okay, pelajar badak online datang ke sini, mungkin kita boleh uh, wave kan in term of the Accommodation kan, hmm. tapi makan mungkin sendiri kan. Yeah. Dan di situ kita boleh buat banyak aktiviti. Kampus tua tempoh hari sebulan pelajar itu datang. Kemudian so, hmm. kita bawa jalan uh, banyak tempat. Seronok lah jalan yeah. ke Kuala Lumpur kan. Dan <laughs> at the same time we have uh, also uh, uh, plan many activities lah, like cultural activity kan. Dan kita masuk uh, for agro-tourism, masuk ke ladang-ladang, okay. fruit picking and etc. Dan of course lah, ada juga akademik punya things lah, like penganjuran seminar, okay. sharing session, okay. dan sebagainya. Uh, maybe kalau ini dokter, kalau untuk yang student yang sudah ambil final year project, mungkin uh, bisa enggak gitu... Uh, mungkin ada uh, supervision ya supervision gitu boleh joint supervision ya yeah, joint supervision uh, of, of FYP gitu maksudnya skripsi ya Bo boleh bawa, boleh Pak Bandra bila boleh bisa dibuat uh, baru ini saya ada diskusikan dengan UIN Sunan Ampel untuk joint supervision juga hmm. untuk FYP boleh insyaallah kita contohnya pelajar kita okey daripada perlis disubah oleh secara bersamalah oleh apa nama dosen daripada Indonesia dan pelajar Indonesia supervised by dosen di UiTM bisa dibuat Pak Indra even previously pun kita pernah juga melaksanakan dengan universiti Indonesia juga joint vision untuk pelajar FYP bisa Uh, latihan tapi, praktikal juga boleh. Latihan praktikal. Oh, gitu ya. Praktikal training pun boleh. <laughs> basically, kalau macam dalam keadaan sekarang, dalam virtual, yeah. basically bisa juga boleh untuk praktikal training secara virtual tanpa perlu datang sini. Tak ada masalah, Pak Indra. Hmm. Kita akan discuss lah. Kita akan jumpa frequently from time to time dan kita akan bagi task yang dikerahkan yeah. kepada pelajar tersebut untuk mendapatkan experience of uh, practical training. Boleh. Terus uh, untuk uh, reportnya itu pakai bahasa Inggris ya? Kalau di sana? FYP-nya? Ya, bahasa Inggris. Oh, okay. 
Jadi tidak pakai bahasa Melayu ya. Uh, kalau pelajar UI, ya kalau pelajar UI itu dalam bahasa Inggris Pak Indra. Oh, Oke. Okay. Berarti nanti uh, dipilih student yang mengerjakan FYP ya harus mau menulis pakai bahasa Inggris berarti di reportnya. Jadi buat dua 